Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's webinar, which will give you an introduction to how ArcGIS can help you manage your forest, forest data. Um, during the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode. If you're experiencing technical difficulties joining the GoToWebinar session, there are details in your info tab on who to contact. Or you can email mapsmakesense at esri-ireland.ie or the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. We are using audio broadcast for today's event. You may notice a small dialog box in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. This box must remain open to hear audio. It can be removed if it is obstructing your view. If you'd like to chat to us, please use the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. To ask a question at any time, please feel free to do so using the Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen. There, this will be available through the floating toolbar, which will appear on the bottom right-hand side of your screen during the RM demo. Questions and answers will be addressed at the conclusion of today's presentation. Good morning, everybody. So my name is Dermot O'Kane, and that was my colleague Aideen, and, and thank you for joining us this morning. So today we will introduce you to our ArcGIS platform and how it can, and indeed in some cases does, help you manage your forest. Today we will present some of the simple advantages and workflows that can be introduced to your business by using ArcGIS. We will show you how it can bring real benefit to you and your forestry business. Esri Ireland is a software and services organization specializing in the application of geographical information systems, GIS. We specialize in providing mapping solutions built on the ArcGIS platform, which help our customers record where things happen and analyze why, and to give them a business insight on which to make better decisions. ArcGIS is a mapping platform that is developed by the Environmental Systems Research Institute Esri, based in California, and it's used by thousands of organizations and hundreds of thousands of people all around the world across various sectors to help them make effective use of geography and location. This location-based approach to business is fundamentally applicable to the forestry sector as almost everything that you do is location-based. We're pretty sure that most, if not all of you guys, are familiar with the benefits of using mapping. And most, if not all, again, would have experience using the iForest system from the Department of Agriculture to manage your grants and premiums. What we're going to show you today is not a replacement for iForest, but it is, if we could describe it in a few words, your own version of iForest. It's not for grants, but it's a mapping system that will enable you to store and visualize all your forest data. Some of the workflows and business applications that we will focus with you over the next 30 minutes are how to manage your forest data using ArcGIS. We will show you how to create the locations of your forest and capture and store associated attribute information like landowner, area, species, etc. We will show you how to create true area measurements, compartmentalize your forest estate, map and track forest species, and get an understanding of potential yield. With ArcGIS, you can map the location of any other data of interest in the forest, like access points, forest roads, logging areas, for example. We will have a look at the base mapping available with ArcGIS. We will show you how you can get access to high-quality base mapping or aerial imagery, uh, which we provide with ArcGIS. Indeed, in Ireland, it's a 30-centimeter resolution imagery, um, all of which is from 2012 onwards. This will give you the ability to identify and visualize your forest data and other land parcels that may be of interest. Uh, we will show you and talk about how you can get access to official third-party data to aid the decision-making, for, for example, sites of archaeological heritage, specials area, special areas of conservation from the National Parks and Wildlife. You can access data from the Environmental Protection Agency, the Geological Survey, the Marine Institute, and many, many more. This data can help you at the pre-planning stage uh, to give you an early indication of whether the site uh, is, uh, your site is within an area of known exclusion. 
Uh, we will show you how ArcGIS enables you to visualize the entire forest estate, data for all landowners. If you're working in a cooperation, data for all landowners and the entire co-op, including any historical data that you may want to visualize. Finally, we will show you how to share your data with your colleagues, stakeholders or cooperative members and how ArcGIS enables you to access your forest data on any device, anywhere, anytime. With ArcGIS, you can take your data with you in the field and, if applicable, edit this data in real time. You can capture and update your information in the field in either online or offline mode, including the ability to capture and store photos or images. I'm now going to hand you back to Aiden, who will take you through a live demonstration of ArcGIS. Aiden will, will take you through a workflow of creating some sample forestry data in ArcGIS de Desktop, then how to share this data with your colleagues or other members of your co-op using ArcGIS Online. Finally, uh, to access this data in the field using our data collection application called Collector for, for ArcGIS. Again, any questions that you guys have now or during Aiden's presentation, please just type them into the box um, and we'll address them at the end. So good morning everybody and thank you for joining us today for our forestry webinar. And um, what we're going to do is really give you an introduction of ArcGIS and some simple workflows on how to create and work with your own data on top of the different base mapping that we have in our system. And um, we'll also show you some of the data that's supplied from some of the public organizations within Ireland that are also using our GIS software and they've shared it so you can actually utilize this data and they've streamed it online so you can pull it in and overlay it on top of your maps and um, so I'll show you how to do some of this and over the next little while so what you're looking at right now is our ArcGIS desktop system so this is a desktop tool that's installed on your machine and um, it's pretty comprehensive in terms of it's got lots of different functionality available for any type of use case that you might have um, but to start off with, for forestry, there might just be simple things that you might want to do. For example, see where things are happening on the map. So like if we look at this area here, there's we can zoom in on any area and see different forestry land parcels. These base maps are just imagery for the whole world that are available. The source is digital globe imagery. And they've been recently updated to 30 major resolution for the whole country. But these are available for the global base map imagery service. So you can get it for the whole of Ireland and the whole of the world. So, as you can see. But well, we're just going to focus on a smaller area today. So I'm just going to zoom in to this area here. Um, I'll show you how you get access to those base maps. There's just a tool up here that you can click on and it says I add base map. What this means is you have access to a variety of different types of layers. Um, it comes up. For example, the imagery or street. Um, okay. Sorry, it's just deciding not to pop up right now, but what it gives you access to are different services like you've got street mapping, you've got your imagery base map, you have access to a variety of different, 12 different base maps, but I'll show you these when we move on anyway. Um, so what the first thing you might like to do is you might like to zoom around the area and see what the actual land is like in terms of different forested areas to see the to see its condition and the progress of different routes and access points. So you can zoom in and you get access to this visually just from the base maps and the detail that you have. 
so you can see entrances, roads, and the condition of the trees, and so on. But what you might like to do is, you might like to, as well as focusing on one specific area, you might want to look at a whole area of the different, different forests that you might be managing at any one time. So say, for instance, there's a few of them here. And you might want to create and digitize your own land area. So what it can do is, there's an editing tool here, and you can click Start. And we've got a land area layer created over here. So I can just click on this and click OK. And you can just go up to your editor, and it's got Create Features. And you've got your land areas, so you're just literally drawing some features onto the map. So you can zoom in and you can just click onto the map to draw your boundary. So once you have your area created, what you can do is behind the scenes there's a table behind each of these features. Just like an Excel table, it's got different fields and different columns of information that you might like to input when you click on this feature to get the information about it. So while you're creating it, you digitize it, and then you go in and you go to its attributes, which is the exact same as different fields within Excel. So we've got these pre-configured earlier on, but it just depends on what kind of information you want to associate with your different forest areas. So for instance, you could categorize it by land area name, so who owns it, ownership, and um, management. So you can just literally have these pre-configured, or you can type them in. And you might like to know different things, like what's the land type like, and um, what's the land use like, the individual tree species. So these can all be pre-configured, and you can have species, and so on. So once that's created, you might also like to have a website, so I've got one here, and you can input it. So this can be a link to anything that you might like to fill in a form, or any important information you might want to attach to that feature. So once you have this all filled in, you can go and you can save your edit. and stop editing. So then when you click on this now, you'll see the information that we just filled in. So it might just digitize another area, just while I'm at it. And I'll focus in, I'll just see my, I'll focus in on this forested area here. So I'm gonna create my area, I'm going to click here, and I'm just gonna trace along And I'll go in again, have my attributes, and change the land areas to land area D this time. And type. So just fill these in. Or again, you could just type them in as well. And I can just click Save Edit and stop editing. So once you have the land digitized on the map and you have your selection to see where everything is, you might like to do things like um, see where roads are or access to roads and things like that. So we can zoom in and we can see that there's just a road here. Um, you might like to do things like we've got a, a line layer here as well. And you can go in and start your editing. And this time we're going to draw on our route. So we're going to go in, create features, and we can digitize our line. That's the map. And 
and again we can go in and fill in any important information that we might have associated with it if we want to and click save edit stop editing so once your lines digitized and your land areas are there you might want to find out more information about them just by looking at them so I'm just going to zoom out You've got a selection of all the different forested areas that you're managing at any one time, say in this area here. And behind all these, you can go and click on this layer and go open their attribute table because they have a table behind them. And we can see some of the information that we've inputted for any of these here. And we might want to see which area is which owner owns which area. So you can do things like go down to your properties and you can symbolize it by each land area is owned or each forested area is owned by a different person. So you can go in and you can categorize this by who owns which segment of land. As you can see, it's broken up by color. And you can also do things to help your visualization. So you can go in and label your features in a certain way based on these fields as well. As you can see, just by visualizing them. So once these are created, you can also do things like if you easily you want to export this and send it to somebody. So you can go and create a different print layer that you can then send to somebody. So you can go and insert a title or your north arrow and different map elements that are important to your map. Your scale bar. A picture or an object which could be anything from that's related to that particular project or that different um, different map that you're working on. So you can do any of these in your dynamic text and do, you can specialize and create your own templates for when you're doing printouts. So if I just wish you want to send that to somebody, you can just go file and you can go export map. And you can export it out to PDF and just send it to someone that way. So you can create it like that or what you can do then is say if there's any specific requirements and you want to go in and send one of these areas to one particular owner of this land, you can just go into your attribute table and you can use different tools like select by attributes and you can go in by name equals say land area A and just click apply and then you can do things like see it's selected there. So you can go into the layer again and you can decide to select that one area. So create layer from selected features. And what you can do is you can send that data to the owner of that to view that information or see exactly where their lands are. So you can export it out. You can export it to a variety of different map formats, say feature classes or shapefiles, and they can then view that data if they upload it to a mapping system. So what you can do then as well is, I'm just going to remove this. Say for instance there's any requirement that you have to analyze and view on the map that you're subject to. You might like to say for instance this road. You can create a buffer around the road to see the distance around it and its proximity to different land areas. So what you can do is you can go to your toolbox just one second, it's just going to load for me and you've got a range of different analysis tools that you can work off like different editing tools and you can do things like 
buffers, extracts, and so on. So here's our buffer tool here. So you can do things like I want to input my line there. And I want to get a buffer of say 60 meters around that particular route. I'm just going to click OK. So it's just going to process this for me. Just takes a couple of seconds. Okay, so once that's done there, you can go in. I'm just going to change the color of this. And you can see at a particular zoom scale, you can see the distance 60 meters from that line on either side, just by using the base maps that are there. So this is our desktop tool and as you can see that's just a basic workflow of editing and doing your buffers and analysing where things are happening on the map. Um, but what you might also like to do is you might get more context from you see where your land areas are, you're working with your own information but what you might like to do is you might want to get more context about where things are happening on the map, say if you want to do any sort of pre-planning and different things like that. So what you have access to with each desktop here, with each when you install it on your machine is you have access to our online, our GIS online, which is like your online portal, which many organizations in the company, in the country, actually share their information into. So it's like a big portal of data that you can stream into your own maps and view it. So for each of these desktops, you get what's essentially like a Gmail username and password that you can sign into, which gives you access to ArcGIS Online, which is our online portal that has all this information. So you can go in and you can sign in with this login as I've already done. Or I'll sign in here to show you. And this is like a data hub that you've got access to, which will help you give context to the different land areas on the map from different organizations, as Dermot mentioned, like NPWS and the GSI, the EPA. And different areas like this are from like special protected areas and different heritage sites and so on. So how to access the data is you click Add Data from ArcGIS Online. Because I'm signed in, you've access to this data. And you can literally search by any tag that somebody might have uploaded this information by. So as you can see for Ireland, it's four pages of different data that you can stream onto your own map. But we're not interested in it. We're interested in specific data, environmental data that could be of use to us. Say, for instance, I'm going to search by MPWS. And as you can see, there's proposed national heritage sites, special areas of conservation, special protected areas, and so on. Or you could search by EPA or And there's just some of the data that we've access to. So I'm just going to search by this. And I'm going to add this layer here. So it just takes a couple of moments to load up into my map because it's quite a big data set. And I'm just going to zoom out slightly.
So you can see how this information adds to the map. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see from a larger context. And I'll just turn this on. If I click on any of these areas, if I go to my info and click on them, it'll give me more information about anything once I click on them. I might add another one. This time it's proposed national heritage sites. So if I click on any of these, I can visualize them to see which is, which is a national heritage site and if any of them intersect with any of my proposed areas. So you can work with any of these and as you can see there's a selection of data available and it'll just give you context to your own map. So you can do things like exporting it out to PDF or what you've access to is once you've done your different analysis on the map, you've got the option to share this into your Actress Online account. So what Actress Online is, desktop is for doing all your different analysis, your editing and your print layouts and things like that. And your Actress Online is for streaming in different data sources that are available from different organizations. And essentially, it's a sharing and collaboration tool for your organization. So it lets you have like your own your own portal that you have access to all of your maps. Your different employees or co-ops or any sort of colleagues will have access to the maps because you can share them into this portal. So how you have access to this is you can go file and you can share it into your Arches Online account as a service. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to remove these. And I'm just going to share this into the Arctis Online account. So it's already got base maps in it already. So I can remove these. And what I'm doing is I just want to share this information into my online account because this is my data that I've worked with. And this is the data that I want to share with my colleagues. So how you do this is you click share and share as and just push it into your online account. And if I go back here, if you update this data regularly, like once a week or whenever you're doing updates, you can override what's in your online account that other members of your organization have access to. So we're just going to publish it. What it lets you do is explain what the data is about um, and as you can see you can share it publicly with other people or you can share it into different groups that you might have in your organization account. So you're just giving specific people certain maps or sharing it with your whole organization depending on who the maps are meant to be seen by. So you just can click publish and it publishes the true. So I've got this already created in my online account. So what you do is, I'm just going to go here. So for, for those of you guys that have been using ArcGIS for a number of years, ArcGIS Online may be new, um, but you do get free access to ArcGIS Online with every desktop that you have licensed. Uh, so some of you may not know that. Uh, it's something that Esri would have uh, given to all their, all their customers. So for every ArcGIS desktop you have, you get free free access to ArcGIS Online. Yeah, so you can use your desktop for your analysis and your creation of data, and then you can use your online for different members in your organization for sharing and collaborating your maps and data with them. So essentially you have your own portal, your own organization website. 
and um, so you could have all of your different members of your organization added and um, what artists online is as well is it is an easier workflow so somebody might have skills in GIS or know how to use desktop but artists online is really easy to pick up as I'll show you now so each member has their own content So here's some maps I created earlier and what they have access to is so once that data is pushed in those layers from your desktop you can go in and it becomes a feature layer so essentially your data that's in that table an Excel table you push it online it becomes a service that you can be reused by different members of your organization it's just online data really so what we're going to do is we're going to show you an example of those other members of the organization might be field collectors on the collectors out on the field and so once the data is uploaded online it gives you special privileges that you can do so what this means is you can enable whether that data is ever going to be allowed to be edited or not so you can decide what different editors can do so say the field collectors they can add update and delete features or they can update feature attributes only or add features only you can also enable sync, so this is disconnected editing. What this means is if you're in an area that has um, no internet access, you'll be able to download a copy of those base maps before you go out into the field or when you're connected online. And edits can be made and they can be synced once the field collector is back and um, connected. You can also keep track of who has edited on the field. So each of your field collectors, you can see who has who has edited, who's added features where, the status of them, the time they're collected, and then you've got information. So once your data, you've set that up, you can just add it simply to a map. So this is your online map. You can save it. I'm just going to save this quickly. So once your map is saved, you can decide who can have access to your map. So you can click share. You can decide if everybody or just your organization. Or you can decide just a specific group of users in your organization can have access to it. So when they log on, they only see that specific map. So you can, these are called groups. And this is what it lets you do. So you're, you can send this link to somebody and they can open it up and view this online map. As you can see, it's a lot more user friendly than the desktop, and um, because it's got a different and um, for the different type of user, and um, the it's easy to come across. You can add your own features onto the map directly. You've got access to all those base maps the same way as you do in your desktop, and you just literally digitize onto the map as you can see. And again, all of those areas that we had been all of those drop downs that we've got pre-configured carry through once pushed online as well so you can do your editing here as well and so on and go back and and then what we can do is you've got access to all of your base maps so your imagery your street and so on and again, you can print it out or you can share it out in different applications. So once that map is shared, what you have access to is the ArcGIS Collector app. So this is an app that you can download onto your device, iOS or Android. And what it does is it's a free app, but how it's accessed is through that login into your Arctis Online account that we showed you in desktop. So the same way of getting your information in there, you just log in. When it's on your phone, you share that with a specific person or the field collector has that map that we've shared here. They can, when they open their collector app on their phone, they see that map. So it lets you create and share a map and it lets you collect data on the field, um, online and offline. So just some information here on us. Um, it's difficult to show our phone today, so what I'm going to show is some uh, screenshots. So just one second.
Okay. So when someone looks online in the collector, this could be on their device, and what they see is they see the map that was shared with them from the online account, um, and they just literally click this plus arrow here to add a feature onto the map. Once they click that, they can input information the same way in the form type that we created in desktop and carry straight through. It's got the drop downs that we've created as well, so we just literally need to drop, select which one because you can have this pre configured for data accuracy. Um, and they literally click onto the map and digitize the area that they're interested in or update the area they're interested in or whichever you give them privileges to do. Um, it tracks your GPS on your phone so it can locate where you are in the field, so it will zoom in where you are straight away. Um, and then if you're connected to offline, you can have this area downloaded onto your device, so you go onto the field and they can digitize on their area and sync it back up afterwards. Um, and they just click submit and the feature is created which is this one here so when someone goes back in online into the map they can see the different feature that was drawn so this was created earlier but they'll see it updated and then for any of these areas behind them you can go in and show their table so you get all the information associated with it, just like the desktop. Um, and what you'll also be able to see is the time and date of who's actually edited it and track their edits as well. Okay, so that's um, your field collection. You can go in and do things as well here, like the different analysis tools. Um, you can filter. So you can do things like um, filter by specific species type. Or if there's different land ownership, you can go into name of areas and you can find out who owns which area of land and you can access this and it will zoom you into that land area. Let's go up here and I'll just do that again. That gives me the information about it and then if I want I can get directions to it or if I want to edit any of the information I can also update this as well and then just save my map. Any of the information that you use here as well that can be streamed straight back into your desktop so if the if the map and managed system you can just pull it straight in again you've access to it here through the different tools. So these are the services that you've got at, you've pushed up online and you can go in and you can pull them into your map again. So you can view them in desktop and in online and go either way between them so you can push them in and out accordingly. Um, so that's kind of just the basic workflow. So what we can do, what we've shown you today, is we've given you an overview of how to use ArcGIS desktop and how to share your data and maps through ArcGIS Online. We showed you how to find public web services in ArcGIS Online, how to add them to your map, and we showed you how to do field collection uh, briefly through the, the ArcGIS Collector app. Um, I might just look here and show you just one thing. So this is your searching for data in Artis Online. So you have access to it here as well. Okay, 
So I'll just hand it back to Dermot and for questions. So does anyone have any questions? So if you have any questions, yeah. So while we're waiting for some questions, so if, if there's if any of you guys would like to find out any more, again, what we've done today is, um, I suppose, an introduction. Uh, some of it may be familiar to you guys, some of it may be new. Um, if there's anything from the desktop through online through the collector that you'd like to see more of, then please just let myself or Aideen know, and we're more than happy to come and spend some time with you. Um, you can get in touch via our email at mapsmakesense at esri-ireland.com. .ie. Yeah. I assume it's .ie. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, there's lots and lots of online resources. Um, for the ArcGIS Online, there are lots of online help videos that basically describe every task that you would ever need to do in online. There's about a series of 20 of them, uh, which we can share with you. And there's lots of case studies and sample applications of GIS at that website esri.com forward slash industries forward slash forestry and I believe it will follow up um, with details of this webinar plus some URLs for you to browse. To browse. Yeah. So just to let you know as well and um, so for this site here it might be of interest to you so it goes through different operations that different foresters have done and um, we've got a number of case studies from specific foresters in the US and Canada that you might find their case studies interesting or relevant to what you do as well. Um, and just to let you know some sites and some of our partners um, globally. So again, if you've got any questions, just email us or contact us at massmakesense.ireland.ie or if there's any specific demo or workflow that you might like to see, we can come out and visit and go share any of that with you. Okay, so, okay, so we don't seem to be getting any questions. Um, so we're a little bit little bit early. We had allowed to 11, 11 o'clock, but um, we'd like to thank you for attending. Um, and again, we hope to see you all again. So we will keep you updated of um, future webinars. Um, again, so it's it's something that we, the forestry sector is something that we're hoping to do a lot of work with this year. Um, so please ask us questions, um, test us if there's anything you think you'd like to do with mapping or GIS or geography, please, please ask us because we'd love to get involved with you. Okay. okay. Thanks for joining us today um, and yeah, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.